Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Reconyx, Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Flatwood Natives, Morel Targets, Caldwell Shooting Supplies, Hooks, Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Summit Tree Stands, Drake Non-Typical Clothing, RTP Outdoors, Yamaha, Fourth Arrow, Scent Crusher, Mossy Oak Properties of the Heartland, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Motorola Lighting Solutions, Scorpion Venom Archery, Code Blue, Decode, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. Missouri has an alternative method season that usually falls during late December. This can be a great time of year to hunt because deer are typically on a food cover, food cover pattern. Several weeks ago, we began preparing our muzzleloaders for this season. Once the scope was mounted, the gun was bore sighted, Daniel headed to the range to sight it in. Daniel started at 50 yards to make sure we had bore sighted it well enough to be on paper, then backed up to 100 yards to fine tune the scope. Yeah. If you've shot a muzzleloader much, you know there can be a significant drop even at 200 yards. But just holding over with the standard reticle leads to a lot of inaccuracies and guesses. That's why I really like Nikon's BDC muzzleloader scope, bottom dead center. It has a mark for 100, 150, 200 yards, all the way out to 300 yards. You don't have to hold over, and you can shoot those distances with confidence. We got the CVA sighted in, and then waited till the day before season to check the Reconyx cameras and have the most recent information. I wasn't surprised when the images showed most deer activity was at night and or in the timber. This is due to a very large acorn crop throughout much of the Whitetail's range and recently warmer temperatures. Fortunately, one of our cameras at a plot we call Prickly Pear showed a decent pattern of deer using the plot morning and afternoon. My youngest daughter, Ray, has been really busy with school and shooting trap after school and hasn't been able to hunt much since the first of bow season. Ray took a buck we called Oakley during the early part of bow season and as I mentioned, due to her schedule, hasn't hunted much since. Based on the pattern and Ray's eagerness to hunt, I suggested she go to Prickly Pear. The plot is generally oriented east to west. The opening day of muzzleloader season, the wind was forecast to be out of southeast, and we've got a redneck ghillie blind in the western portion of the plot. Based on our experience and recent trail camera images, we know deer typically approach from the southwest or northeast. It was a perfect setup for Ray. It was a clear, frosty morning when Ray and Tyler got to the blind. As they settled in, Ray hoped deer would continue the pattern of the last couple of days. It's December 22nd, and we're out here this morning on the opening day of muzzleloader season. It's a little chilly, but hopefully we'll see some deer in a little bit. I haven't seen anything yet, but I'm looking for either a doe or a nicer buck, so we'll see what happens. It wasn't long till the first deer stepped out. It was a doe fawn, and when it got to the plot, it was head down feeding on the eagle seed fall buffalo blend. Even though it was tempting, and I know that doe fawns count towards a doe removal project, Ray opted to give it a pass and wait on a mature doe or a buck. The 
The fawn worked out a plot, and not long after it left, a button buck stepped in. The button buck was close and easy to identify as a button buck, and not long after that, a group of does and fawns also entered the plot. As often happens during the late season, the deer stayed fairly close together, and Ray wisely waited until one of them separated and offered a clear shot. The one at the very front of the head Yeah. That's the biggest one. Okay. I'll wait for it to separate itself from the pack. Finally, one of the does broke off and Ray prepared for the shot. Just as Ray was preparing to shoot, the doe started walking again, and Ray and Tyler had to readjust. Right now, it's quartering towards us. I'm gonna wait for it to get. She quickly settled in and prepared once again to take the shot. Right now, it would be a shoulder shot. This time, the doe was quartering two, and Ray held off again. Finally, the doe turned broadside. Okay. Are you good? Are you good, Tyler? Are you good? Yeah, kill it. Ready? That girl. Dude, it's down in the field. Yeah. No way. Dude, you sighted this bad boy in. <laughs> oh my gosh. Good job. Thanks. Thank you. That was crazy. It's not far from the road. No. <laughs> Not at all. Easy drag, easy drag. They came out and they were so bunched up, you know, I was like, I didn't want to be like South Paul when they were all too close and I couldn't get a shot. I'm like, okay, maybe she'll space them out and then like, like perfect, she just walked in front of them. But then I was like gonna shoot and then she turned, you know, and then you're like, stop. I'm like, okay. Cause like, I didn't want to like have to go through the shoulder again right. and just take it half slice the body, well, you know? I was... And then she finally turned. Like, I got a doe, that's all I care about. I didn't really think I was gonna see a buck today after because it, it's like 10 o'clock right now i'm glad that i shot this down because yeah. my philosophy is shooting something is better than shooting nothing so ray strikes again and the cva dropped the doe in her tracks we got out here this morning and it was pretty chilly but we didn't see much to start off with and then we saw this little doe fawn come out but she was too far away and just a little too small for what I wanted. So we let her pass and she walked back in. And then she came out again a little bit later and then she went back in again. And then about 10 o'clock, we saw this doe and a bunch of other does and maybe some button bucks we couldn't tell uh, come out and they were all in a big group. So I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen here because they were like super close together. I'm like, maybe 
uh, this one was the one that I wanted. I'm like, maybe the big one will walk out in front of them. And then lo and behold, the big one walked out in front of all the rest of them. But she was kind of quartering towards us and I didn't want to take that chance. Uh, so we waited a little bit, she walked on a little bit more, and she finally she lined up for the shot, and we took it, and she dropped right in her tracks. So I'd say it's a pretty good shot. We're one more doe closer to our management goat. When we got the doe back to the shop, we hooked up the rack jack to the Yamaha and began processing the meat. Once Tyler had skinned past the shoulders, we could see both the entry and exit hole. Well, we got raised dough back to the skinning shed. Tyler's already skinned it down. We're looking at the entry hole right here on the shoulder. Of course, Ray made a great shot, dropped it in its tracks. Looking at this entry hole, great trauma on the outside. We already see all the way through the shoulder and even kind of into the chest and kind of down towards the belly. Well, we spun her around this exit hole Lots of trauma, just a massive hole. We're going to open her up, start taking off meat, and look and see what's inside. Tyler got all the meat off this dough, put it in the cooler. We got inside to see what was there, and it's really impressive. We removed the vitals, and I've actually got the lungs and the heart right here, and Ray shot with the CVA, took out the front of both lungs. Shooting double shoulder, taking out both lungs, is pretty good, but what I'm really impressed with is what's inside. There's a two inch hole on both sides. The muzzleloader had done a perfect job causing massive trauma to the vitals. A fun morning hunting for the entire growing deer team and fresh venison for Christmas. It's all good. During Ray's hunt, you may have noticed a hot zone fence protecting some eagle seed forage soybeans in the far end of the plot. A few weeks ago, we shared we created a gap in the hot zone to allow deer to feed on the bean pots. That same day, we placed a Reconyx camera close by to see how long it would take deer to start using the beans. It was exciting for us to see deer had found the beans and were using them. After the peak of the rut, deer are genetically programmed to seek energy-rich food sources. They need to replenish the weight they lost during the rut and put on a layer of fat to help protect during those cold days. Standing soybeans fit the needs of deer this time of year perfectly, and deer readily use the pods. We have a pair of summit tree stands hung near the gap, and with this recent deer activity, you can bet we'll be hunting there soon. Missouri's archery season closes January 15th, and we're eager to finish the season strong, adjusting our techniques each week. After season closes, we've got some hog hunts planned. If you'd like to see the techniques we use during the late season, or for hog hunting, please subscribe to the Growing Deer channel. The days are getting a little bit longer, which means there's more time for all of us to get outside and enjoy creation. But no matter how much light is outside, make sure you take time every day to slow down, be quiet, and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.